So last time we learned to draw some basic geometric shapes uh, in one point perspective. Today we're going to get a little bit more elaborate. We're going to draw a word, we're going to put it in perspective, uh, and then we're going to draw an environment and maybe get into some a little bit more uh, advanced um, uh, perspective drawing stuff. So the first thing we're going to draw is we're going to draw a, a word. You can do your name uh, or if you have something else that you want to do, uh, some other word. I'm going to do my last name, which is uh, Mr. Boyd. Um, now, when you are drawing it, you definitely want to use a ruler and you want to draw in block letters. So you do not want to draw curved letters. You want to have sharp, straight angles because we want to get used to drawing things in uh, perspective that way. So, uh, okay, so I've got my name in basic block letters. Next, we need to put our vanishing point and our horizon line. Now, if you do it too high and you do it close next to your name, you're gonna run into problems because it's gonna have, uh, things are gonna kind of, um, things get weirder the closer you get to your vanishing point and the closer you get to the horizon line. So, my advice to you, give yourself some room between uh, the, your name that you've created and the horizon line. So give yourself a little bit of room there. I'll put my horizon in, put my vanishing point. You can put it wherever you want. I'm just going to go kind of right in the middle. Okay, and now we start uh, adding in our perspective lines, just like we did with those basic blocks, but we're going to get a little bit more exciting because we've got holes in our blocks now. So let's go. We'll get started. Uh, some of it will be the same. Now some of it, like right there, you can see I can't draw the line because it's inside, it, it, the, the, it's, it, there's no way to draw the line from this corner right there. So I'm just going to leave that blank right there. Go up from there. Okay. Now, uh, I need to follow along again, but this time we're going to get some weird angles. We're not just doing straight up and down anymore. So I'm going to go from here, pull down a little bit. Now when I do this, it's not going to be straight up and down. It's going to follow whatever angle uh, the original line's from. So if it's at this, put it there, pull it over a little bit, just like that. So th this section here relates to this. So we take it here, pull it over a little bit, and there we go. But now we also have to do the insides of things. So. Let's do the inside of this hole in the B and this one. Now how thick it'll be, it's tough to tell exactly, but we'll just kind of go sort of medium width. So there, now we can see the inside, the, this is the bottom part of this section there, and this is the right side of this section, and then this part in there, this would actually be uh, the sky that you're being able to see through it. Let's do it again on the O. So when I do the inside, I still do the top part, following that, and this goes straight down here. It's really going to be really skinny because we're getting close to our vanishing point. There we go. All right, I'll do the, the rest of these. Okay, so now I've got uh, a word in one point perspective, but let's put some environment in here. Now down here on the bottom, we do want to do some stuff in perspective. So uh, well, now you can do what you want as long as you put some stuff in perspective, I'm going to try putting a house in. So let's put a house. We'll start just like we did with a regular block. Uh, we're going to do uh, the front first and then make it into perspective. So there's the front and then we go back to perspective. Now, when we're decorating the house, anything that's on the front is going to be facing towards you. So you're just going to draw it like regular uh, straight geometric shapes. But things on the side, it's going to get a little bit weirder because it's going to be going back towards the vanishing point. So if we add any things, any decoration on the side, like windows, they need to go back towards the vanishing point. Okay, let's draw something organic. Now, when you're drawing something that's an organic shape, like a tree, you don't have to worry about uh, the 
uh, perspective lines as much. So I'm going to start by drawing a big tree. Let's draw a big tree over here. So there's my tree. Now, if I want to add more trees, I do want to use perspective for it so I can figure out how big the trees are depending upon how far away they are. And I'm going to do that just by drawing real lightly from the top of this tree down to the vanishing point and from the bottom of the tree down to the vanishing point. Okay. Now, this will be able to tell me how far the tree is depending upon where it is. So the farther back it goes, the higher up on the, on the plane here, the smaller the tree is going to get. So if I go up to here, I can put a tree here. So if I start at the bottom line, it'll go up to the top line. So if a tree at this distance will look like that. A tree at this distance will look like this. Okay. Now, we don't want to just have one weird row of 100 trees. But what we can do is, I've got three trees here now, I can use that. Any tree that's on this horizontal line in line with this tree is going to be the same size. So if I have a tree here that starts over here on this edge, it's going to go up and be the exact same height as this tree. So it's going to go up to the top there. So I know a tree here will be this size. I know a tree that is in line with this one will be the same size. And what I usually do is I get a couple of different trees just to kind of spread them around a little bit. It's nice to erase the construction line so you can kind of see what you're looking at. And just use those for the basics. Not every tree is going to be exactly the same size anyway, so it's okay to kind of uh, play around with it. But use this as sort of a baseline, having a couple trees out there to figure out how big trees should be at what distance. And let's spread them around nicely so it doesn't look like there's just one weird line of 100 trees there. So I'm going to add some more little fluffy trees in the top there, poking out. I'll draw a whole forest. And we can add some other stuff in. Let's add like a little, there's a little path. A mountain in the background. Okay, so we've got some basic stuff going on here. Um, let's ink it. So, going in with the inker, we're going to start with the thick side. I'm going to get a little bit more fancy with this one. Now, I've done the thick side for the front. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of texture, so a repeating pattern. I'm going to use the skinny side, and I'm just going to go back towards the vanishing point on the sides of all of these letters. It'll give it some sort of shading, uh, but also kind of gives it a little bit more three-dimensionality because it's following towards that vanishing point. And uh, let's ink some of this other stuff down here. And I could use the skinny side of the pen, do some, uh, do some shading on the side of this, uh, this house too, going back towards the vanishing point. You can even add in some little texture, sort of a little brick pattern. It's just a bunch of lines with a couple little lines going down every once in a while. On the side, it'll go back towards the vanishing point. If you notice with this mountain, I'm having it so that you can see it poke through those little holes a little bit. Just kind of gives you a sense of space when you have something in front. So you can see, like kind of like I did over here, this tree, you can see the tree is in front of that house. Gives it a sense of space. You can see that this is in front of that. I can see that that letter O is in front of the mountain because the mountain's behind it. Just kind of ways to, to trick the eye into thinking that, that there's a, a sense of space. Like if I do a cloud up here, I can have the cloud show up and be behind that letter O. So I know there's a sense of space to it. Little clouds up there. 
Maybe add a little texture to my trees there. You don't need to cover the whole tree with leaves, but you can just add a couple, a little bit of repeating patterns. Just, you know, while you're inking, just to give it the impression that that is a different texture than other things in the, in the drawing. Same with the, the trunk, add a little bit of texture. All right, it's looking pretty good, let's erase. And we can get into painting this. So, let's start with this, give it some, uh, a base of flat color, then add in some shading along the sides by uh, adding in another color there. Now let's do this house. I'm going to start with a, a light color. Remember, you can always get darker, but you can never get lighter, so always best to start with a light color. And then I can add some texture in, following in on some of these lines. All I'm going to do is take my brush, turn it sideways, follow some of these lines. Now when I get to this tree, I've got lots of different colors of green, so why don't I go in there, I'm gonna use a bunch of different colors of green, make little splotches, and I'm gonna make a cool sort of leafy texture by doing that. So by using multiple different colors. Now I'm not just mashing the brush in there, I'm just making little tiny brush strokes. And then let's go with a darker green. It's just another way to paint a texture on there. Maybe get some brown. All right, and let's uh, uh, fill the rest in. <laughs> Go for it. So, uh, give it your best shot. Uh, next time, the next project we're gonna get into, we're gonna get a little bit fancier, so make sure to check out the next section. All right, good luck, guys. Go for it.